have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, would you please turn to Exodus chapter 20. And let's look at verse 16. And look, so this is, we're getting down toward the end of, of these verses in, uh, in Exodus. Uh, we got one more Sunday. Next Sunday will be our last Sunday in, in, in Exodus. So uh, again, if you, have, if you have your Bible, and I hope that you do, find your way to chapter 20. Let's look at verse 16. I think it's a very familiar verse. It's a short verse. Um, and again, it goes right along with, uh, with where we've been. I know we had a little space in that little break in there, but we're picking back up. We want to we finish out this series here. But Exodus chapter 20 and verse 16 reads, You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Now, this is the ninth commandment. And it has to do with controlling one's tongue. I know maybe that sounds a little, uh, 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 you know, maybe controlling your tongue. Maybe you weren't thinking about it in, in that regard. But it's, it's a very, the tongue is a very important but extremely difficult task to control our tongue. James tells us that the tongue can be tamed by no man, right? So tang, the tongue can be tamed by no man. And in James chapter 3 starting in verse 1 and going to verse 8. Let's, lead, let's see what James has to say about that, to share with us, to tell us about this little bitty thing in our mouth that sometimes just takes control and uh, gets us in trouble. Okay, So James says, starting in verse 1 of chapter 3, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment, for we shall stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths, but they may be that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds. They are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. And verse 5 says that even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles? And the tongue is a fire, a, word of, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and is set on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. Verse 7 says, for, for every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly Poison. Man, I tell you what, James doesn't cut any slack that does he? He pours it pretty much all out right there. He tells us that. So, man, you read that and, and, and we, we listen to what James says. How in the world then? You know, I ask myself that question. Oh my, oh my, how can I overcome this unruly tongue? How can I, how can I do that? It sounds almost impossible right here by what James tells us that, look, man, this little bitty thing in our mouth, it takes over and it takes control. And most of the time, a lot of the times, if we're not careful, it leads to trouble. He says that it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Now, let's be reminded of what Paul shared with the church in Philippi. If you would, flip over to Philippians chapter 4. Flip over to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. And here, we're going to find out a way, a way, and how we might do better at controlling this tongue, right? Okay, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. And Paul is talking to the church at Philippi, and he says, what does he say? He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So yes, there is an answer. There is an answer to this, to this unruly tongue. There is an answer to that. And it, it is found in Christ and Christ alone. Just, just like everything else, if we really get right down to the root of all of the things of this life, 
Look, it can be found in Christ and Christ alone. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I tell you what, if something's going on in your life and you got something bad to say or whatever about somebody, somebody's upset you, and we do get upset, okay? But look, if, if before you would let that tongue start wagging, if I would let my tongue, if I would get my, my heart, not my brain, my heart, if I would get my heart on Christ, then it would decide what my tongue is going to say. Alright, so, alright, I need y'all to help me on this part right here, okay? Because I cannot stand here in this pulpit and be a hypocrite, okay? I, I, I don't want to, uh, I, 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 I wouldn't do it intentionally, so I'm going to make a statement here, and then I want y'all to repeat it back to me because I need to hear this as much as I want you to hear it as well, okay? So I'm going to say it, and then I want you to say it back to me. Therefore, there's absolutely no excuse for a big mouth. All right, thank you. I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that. You know, I think we do. We need to hear. We need to hear that sometimes because, you know, as, as much as James does, he explains all that, and then and then Paul does remind us though. There's in God's word all throughout. He always reminds us that might reminds us that there is a there's a way out. There's an escape from doing bad. God will never put us in a place and not give us a way to get away from sin, to turn away from that sin. We'll never be backed up into a corner that's so tight that we can't get away from that sin. If we'll call upon the name of Christ and ask Him to give us that strength and the courage and the things that we need to be able to do that. This verse in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 16, it kind of, when you read it, it sort of, it, it has the sound and the ring of it. It primarily is dealing with somebody's testimony in a trial setting, it's something like that we would hear maybe in a courtroom, right? In a courtroom, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. It's in a trial setting. God says that we must never be guilty of lying on our neighbor, therefore causing him to suffer. We just should not do that. We are encouraged to always be truthful. Let's be careful with that word truthful okay because sometimes we like to take that word we'll twist that around a little bit too and and we'll talk about that in just a minute but we are, should always be truthful and absolutely honest when we're dealing with another person now here's something that we need to consider as we consider some of what some we just look some of what god has said about the tongue we just read a a, a brief a few brief verses you know, we need to pray that He will help us to understand, look, that every time, every time that we speak of another person or speak about another person, we are literally holding that, per that person's reputation in our hands. Okay? I know that's pretty heavy. That's a lot to lay on you, but, that's, but it's absolutely the truth. And we need to, we need to remember that. We're, we're, we're holding that person's uh, reputation in our hands. It's a serious thing when when we undermine the reputation of another uh, of another by the words that we speak. We're guilty. We're guilty of destroying that person's respectability and their credibility uh, before others. You know, and it's a sad thing when we think that we have to that we have to that we have to talk about somebody in that way, uh, that, that, that we can build ourselves up and, and by pushing them down. And that's a sad thing, but it happens. Uh, we're, we're, seeing a, we're seeing a lot of that uh, in the political arena and that kind of stuff today. And that's a, that's a sad place for us to be. It certainly is a sad place for the church to be, but, but, but the church is not immune to that. This is a behavior, though, that is hateful to God and demeaning to men, okay? God doesn't like it. He hates it. He doesn't want any part of it. You know, there's several ways in which people are guilty of using the tongue against another. And look, let's let's talk about just a couple of these words. I'm going to be brief. I, you know, that's one of the things that we do know that you know, uh, even when we're together, we don't we don't want to spend too much time. Uh, that's a that's an important thing of uh, being in a in a room together. Uh, that's one of the ways to help knock this thing back. You're wearing masks, and that's a great thing. And our time together, we need to make sure that we, we're respectful for that time. But here's a, here's a couple of things that we need to know 
about the tongue as we use it against others. Here's some words. Here's some words that we might associate with, with putting others down. And slander. Slander, that's a word that we all know. Uh, what is slander? We're, we're, we're guilty. Uh, we are guilty of slander when we acknowledgingly, we know that we are, we tell a lie about another person in an effort to harm their reputation. All right, that's what slander is, that we that we're, we're, we knowingly tell something about someone in an effort to harm their reputation. And then there's the one lying. How about just plain old out lying? Lying is a false statement deliberately presented as being true, right? Man, you say it with such confidence, right? You say it with, with such zeal. It must be true, but you know it's not the truth. You know it's a lie. A false statement deliberately presented as being true. How about criticism? How about criticism? Now, we heard other people in criticism. Criticism, a statement made about another, another's actions, ways, and deeds in an effort to hurt their reputation. Oh, and how about gossip? How about gossip? There's one. Uh, gossip. This is the practice of spreading rumors about others. <clears throat> now, I don't know if this would come up in the conversation or not. So uh, I, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to take a poll or anything. But uh, he, here's something that you, you, we need to make sure we understand about gossip. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, well, if it's true, it must not be gossip. Well, that's a lie. Because gossip is anything, true or untrue, that is meant to tear down or hurt or destroy others. Uh, it may be that the rumors are true, but even that does not give us the right to tear down another's reputation. And then there's in, insinuation insinuation right we uh, uh we uh this this is the practice of hinting that something may be wrong in the life of another right we we don't come right out and say it i guess it almost might be a, a half truth is there such thing as a half truth is that really such a thing or do we just kind of we just kind of made that up to make us feel better i think maybe right but insinuation is the practice of hinting that something may be wrong in the life of others and when we are guilty of making people doubt another's reputation then we are guilty of sin before the lord you know, that's the very tactic. Did you know that? Insinuation. That is the very tactic that Satan used in the life of Job. Right? He didn't come right out and say it, but he insinuated. He insinuated to God, well, you know, uh, you, you, you wait. You, you let these things happen to, to Job and, and see how he is, God. And so that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a devil's tactic, insinuation. All right? Here's one I bet that's not on your radar. I bet you weren't even thinking about this one right here, Right? Silence. Well, preacher, if I don't say anything, how can I get in trouble? How can I be wrong? Well, look, when you're with those and when you when you hear an untruth told, and you let and you remain silent about that untruth, then we're guilty of the slander of silence. Okay, all right. We become a part to the, of the, to the deception by not setting the record straight. Okay? Here's a, here's a good practice for living when it comes to uh, what we will say or refrain from saying. Okay? And um, we, can, uh, we can form an acrostic. I've been doing a lot of those on the Wednesday night Bible studies. If y'all been writing those down or you've been listening to those, we've been doing a lot of acrostics and we take a word and then we put, we, we take that word and we help that word or use that word to help us remember some things. And the word I want to use this morning is think. Okay, that's, that's the big word. T-H-I-N-K. We should think before we speak of another. All right, and in that word think, if you have a, if you have a way to write this down, here's, here's, a, here's a good little thing to help us. All right, first, the T in think is, is it true? Is it true? Okay, but look, we can't stop right there. Now, you got to take this whole thing for all together, all right, because, because what did we just say? Just because something's true doesn't make it right that we should use it to hurt someone. And I'm not saying that if, look, if they're breaking the law and it's something illegal and it's, 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 
immoral and hurting. Uh, it, it's against the laws of the government and those kind of things that, that we, should, we should pass that by. That's not the kind of things that I'm talking about. But if it's, if it's, if it's, um, if it's something that is not going to build that person up, and, and it is not any, there is no, uh, there is no legal consequence against that, then let's try to build them up and not tear them down. So think, the T is, is it true? Okay? All right, the H in think, will it help? Will it help? Right? It's what I'm, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do. Is it going to help this situation? And then, and then the I in think, is it inspiring? Is it inspiring? Is it, is it going to move someone closer to a relationship with Christ? Is it going to call someone to gain in a relationship with Christ? Then if it's inspiring, then that's probably going to be a good thing. And if it's not, if it's not going to, if it's not going to work for the Lord, if it's not going to move someone closer to the Lord, then probably the best thing to do is leave it alone. And then there's the end in think. And that end is necessary. Is it necessary? Is it necessary? It's what I'm about to say, what I'm about to do. Is it necessary? In the overall scheme of all of life, what I'm about to say, is it necessary? Is it going to change any, anything? And then there's the K. There's the K in the word think in this acrostic. And that K is, is it kind? Is it kind? Okay? So, Think. We need to think before we speak about others. Think. Is it true? Will it help? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? If what, uh, if what you have to say fails on any of these categories, then it's pretty sure and safe bet to, that um, we would better, we'd be better off not to, not to say those things. See, a good habit to fall into is that that of saying nothing about anyone unless it is good unless it is good okay so the question I've asked myself all the way through this whole series every time that I start and I I, I talk I ask myself and I you know they say it's okay to talk to yourself as long as you'll start answering yourself right so uh, the question that I ask myself each time is is this commandment relevant uh, for our day and for our time. And um, so that word relevant, it appropriate, appropriate to the current times. Is it, is, it, is, it, uh, is it appropriate to the current times, to the period or circumstance or contemporary interest? Okay, so that's what that word relevant means. So I ask myself each time, is it relevant? And of course, uh, it's God's word, so absolutely the answer is yes, it's relevant. And look, I, I, want, I want to say more than what I think, but let's look at what Scripture says in Mark chapter 12 and uh, verse 28. Mark chapter 12 and verse 28. And it starts in verse 28, and we'll go to verse 31. It says, Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, ask him, which is the first commandment of all? And Mark tells him in chapter 12 and verse 29, or not Mark, but Jesus, he's talking about, this is Mark who's writing, but he's telling us about Jesus, and Jesus speaks, and Jesus answers him, the first of all the commandments is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for our time together this morning. Lord, we thank you for uh, all the many ways you bless us and take care of us. And 
Lord, I just thank you for these words this morning, Lord. I thank you because they, Lord, they spoke to me. And, Lord, I, I, I pray that I, I truly do practice what I preach. And, Lord, help me to watch my words. Lord, sometimes I don't, I, I, I get frustrated and I get angry, Lord. And uh, I, don't, uh, I don't watch my words, Lord. I don't let my words uh, be filtered through your heart and your eyes. So, Lord God, I pray you help me in that. And help us all in that, Lord, that as we move through this life, that we would be, uh, we would be strengthened in your word and your ideas, and Lord, in, uh, in just uh, in the things that you would have us to do. Father God, if uh, I look around this room this morning, and, and I don't know, Lord, I, 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 if there be one here this morning who doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, Lord God, I pray that. Lord, that they would find you today, that they would know that uh, you came into this world. Lord, that you lived and you, you suffered and you died on a cross. Lord, that you were buried in a tomb. And Lord, that you were raised up on the third day. Lord, all that was done that they, that we, that we, all of mankind might have salvation through you. Father, if there's one here this morning who needs that salvation, Lord God, I, I pray they come and and claim that today before we leave this place. Lord, as we end our time together, Lord, I pray that there would be one here who just, there's something that, that they need to, to, to get straight with you, Lord. There's some area of their life that they just haven't given over to you, Lord, that they would, they would do that and that they would, uh, Lord, that they would uh, allow you, Lord, just to help them in that area. So, Father, I pray now that as we uh, have this closing invitation lord that you would just speak to our hearts and lord we ask these things in jesus name amen